Another day, another hack. And today we will talk about the Nomad hack because Nomad got completely drained. Almost $200 million worth of assets are gone. In today's episode, we will talk about how the hackers managed to do this. And we will also talk about whether this could happen with IBC as well. So make sure to watch this episode to the very end. Three, two, one. Well, here we are again, another day and another hack that occurred on a bridge. Today, Nomad got hacked and it was completely crazy because $200 million worth of assets are gone. The bridge got completely drained, but to be very clear here, this was not the very first hack of this size. Actually, there were even bigger hacks. Uh, one of the most recent ones was Harmony. The Harmony bridge called Horizon also got hacked only $100 million were drained. But then there was also the Ronin hack, which was worth $600 million. And then we also had the wormhole hack and here $300 million were exploited. So no, this is not a new phenomenon. And the problem here is, and why this hack is so interesting is that Nomad used to be or is the main bridge for the FMOS ecosystem. So lots of the $200 million worth of liquidity was going into the FMOS ecosystem. And now again, these 200 millions are gone. So what happened? Before we dive deeper into some Twitter threads, and I find these Twitter threads very, very useful. I also link them, I also link them in the description below. But uh, before we dive deeper here, it's very important for you to understand how traditional bridges work. So there are like a couple of different concepts. Some bridges are completely centralized. So there is basically a company in between that handles the bridging procedure of every token uh, transfer. So for example, you are on, let's say, Ethereum and you want to get your assets over to Polygon. There are companies, so to say, that basically manage this procedure for you. The problem is, of course, you have to trust this entity. But then there is the way that also Nomad shows. So the idea is that you have a smart contract and the smart contract handles everything. So let's say you are on Ethereum and you want to bridge DAI over to BSC. What happens is you lock your DAI tokens on Ethereum and then they get reissued on the destination chain, which is BSC in that case. The problem with that is when you do this via a smart contract, there is of course the risk that this smart contract gets compromised. And well, exactly this happened. Let us dive deeper here. I found a very nice Twitter thread published by Sam Soon. I hope I pronounce his name right. Anyway, he is a researcher at Paradigm and he wrapped the whole story up very, very good. But um, for me, it makes more sense to explain this to you the other way around. So he basically shared his experience, his personal experience, what happened. And then he, um, he set up a TLDR in his last tweet where he basically summed up what happened. And uh, what I will do now is basically to ignore these personal experiences and just focus on what really happened so we have to start a couple um we have to start a couple of days ago because this is where nomad did um, an upgrade it was an upgrade that was yeah very common upgrade um nothing nothing really uh, serious uh, let me find the tweet here here it is. It turns out that during a routine upgrade, the Nomad team initialized the trusted route to be 0x00. To be clear, using zero values as initialization values is common practice. Before we move forward here, let us bring everything together. So Nomad did a routine upgrade and within this routine upgrade, they initialized a trusted route to be 0x00. And now we have to understand what an initialization is actually all about. An initialization is a very common practice in computer science. It is a completely common keyword for determine the value of, um, of an object or of a variable. So if you do programming, you basically set values for certain objects or variables. And uh, the thing is here, the Nomad team initialized uh, the value for 
uh, a trusted root to be 0x00. And uh, the researcher also clarified that this is actually a common practice. So again, imagine the smart contract that, um, that handles the bridging procedure. Within this smart contract, there was this trusted root, and uh, the Nomad team initialized this trusted root to have um, a worth of zero values. So this happened. And um, again, this is very, very common. And here, unfortunately, in this case, it had a tiny side effect of auto-proving every message. And now the question is, what does that mean? Again, so imagine the smart contract, there was a trusted root in it, and during um, during an upgrade, the Nomad team initialized the value of this trusted root, root to be um, a zero-value one. Okay, and this had a side effect of auto-proving every message. This is a huge, huge problem because what that basically means is that you can do everything, that you can do all kinds of transactions without proving it. And this led to the huge, huge mania that um, you were able to find transactions and basically replace it with another address. So um, Samsung, the researcher, concluded all you had to do was find a transaction that worked. Find and replace the other person's address with yours and then rebroadcast it. And then he wraps it up in a TLDR. A routine upgrade marked the zero hash as a valid route, which had the effect of allowing messages to be spoofed on Nomad. Attackers abused this to copy paste transactions and quickly drain the bridge in a frenzied free for all. So what basically happened, just to bring everything uh, together. So because of this mistake during the previous upgrade, people were able to um, do transactions without any messaging proof. And then um, it was able for you that uh, you could replace um, your address with someone else's. So you could go onto the network and see, oh, here's a transaction. This looks super nice. Someone is sending, I don't know, one rep bit is uh, one rep ETH. I want to take this rep ETH. So the only um, the only thing that um, you needed to do was basically replace the addresses without proving that you are the entitled receiver, so to say. So this was a huge, huge lag, and um, he also he also mentioned it here. So when he first saw what happened, um, it looked like a send zero point zero one rep BTC, get 100 rep BTC back promotion. Because as you can see here, the people basically, or the attackers better said, they sent a very small amount to the bridge and then took lots of the money out again. This is how they basically drained Nomad in no time. And here's also a chart once again. So Nomad, yeah, got completely wrecked here. And um, yeah, of course, this is crypto guys and um, lots of people also got hurt because Nomad again was the main bridge in the FMOS ecosystem. Speaking of FMOS, what does this mean for FMOS right now? There are a couple of things and I do not really know where to start, but of course, this is not very good. Of course, and I think this is also very important to mention here, it's not a danger for FMOS, uh, for FMOS itself. So it's not that this bridge hack would harm the FMOS blockchain itself. That's not the case. Also, the FMOS chain is still up and running, so the blockchain is not halted or so. So all good from a technical and security perspective um, on FMOS. But one big problem is that, of course, many, many users suffered from this, including me, and uh, many users lost vast amounts of money. And of course, such a bridge check is very frustrating for many, many people. So they might decide to leave the FMOS ecosystem and don't return. So I see the possibility that many users will not return to FMOS. And yeah, this is very, very sad. Another interesting consequence of the whole drama is also that the FMOS price peaked like crazy on Diffusion. In case you do not know, Diffusion is an AMM on top of FMOS. And the FMOS price on Diffusion is at the time of recording above six dollars 
and on osmosis, just $1.20, something like this. Why is this so? Well, we have to go back to how bridges work. So when you are using a bridge and um, you're relying on a smart contract, you are at danger that this smart contract might get compromised. And this actually happened in the case of Nomad. The problem is if this smart contract gets compromised, also the backing of um, of the stablecoin gets lost because here yeah, the backing just falls away. And this is how the price of USDC on FMOS is worth much less than USDC on Osmosis, for example. You can imagine it like the UST drama, um, a little bit like this, because um, the problem now is that one USDC is not worth, so one USDC on FMOS is not worth. Uh, it's not worth one dollar anymore it's like 20 cents or something like this and um, this is why the price of fmos peaked like crazy on diffusion because it's calculated in usdc and this is why you get for um yeah for six usdc or seven usdc something like this uh one fmos but of course this is just these are just numbers because the real world is that on osmosis one fmos still gets traded for one dollar and ten one dollar and twenty or so um so yeah this is still the price but the usdc's on fmos they are like pretty much worthless as of now and of course all the people that hold usdc right now on fmos they try to sell their usdc's against fmos to take the fmos deployed on osmosis and then sell their fmos against um, usdc on osmosis so this is also part of the reality right now so this is why the FMOS price peaked on diffusion. And uh, some people thought like, hey, this is a super nice arbitrage opportunity. If one FMOS gets traded for $6 on diffusion and just for $1.20 on osmosis, guys, be careful because again, the USDC on FMOS is not worth much. So just be careful. Also, the, the spread between the FMOS price on different decentralized and centralized exchanges are just gigantic. So arbitrage trading as of now with FMOS is super risky. So be very careful with that. On that note, because the USDC on FMOS is worth less now, we also have the problem that some projects might struggle financially right now because a lot of them had um, USDC or held USDC on FMOS and now this USDC is not worth much anymore. And we basically saw the same thing with uh, the Terra drama. So many Terra projects or also crypto projects in general, they hold UST and then they lost vast amounts of money uh, just because their stable liquidity, so to say, just vanished. And um, we experience a very similar situation on, on FMOS right now. Some projects held USDC on FMOS and now the bridge got hacked and now their USDC on FMOS is not backed by much anymore. And uh, this is why they also lost a lot of money because again, USDC on FMOS is I think at 20 cents or so right now. So they made an 80% loss within a couple of hours. So this is not very ideal for any project. So this is another consequence I definitely see here. So a lot of bad news for FMOS. I think we can all agree on that. So first things first, of course, the major bridge got hacked. Lots of liquidity is gone. Secondly, some projects might, uh, might go bankrupt now. And also some users may not return to FMOS in their life anymore. So FMOS lost parts of its user base, which is also not ideal. But apart from that, there weren't many major impacts for the FMOS chain. And besides, also there are other bridges in the pipeline that could be used in order to bring more liquidity to FMOS. So it's not the end of the world for FMOS, but of course, it's not a super ideal situation as of now. But now I also want to dive deeper into what it means for IBC, because of course, many people came and said, hey, this is why we desperately need IBC, because again, one big bridge got hacked after the Harmony drama and also after the Ronin drama. So there were a lot of bridges that got hacked in the past already and IBC is battle proven. And then I, I've i seen this very interesting thread by Tyborg. Huge shout out to Tyborg. Looking forward to see you in Medellin, by the way. 
And um, he wrote a thread about whether this would somehow work for IBC. So if a hack would also work on IBC. Um, I think the key takeaway here is never say never. So theoretically you could hack any, everything. But um, I think for me, the key takeaway from this thread is that it's very, very unlikely. But let, let us have a closer look at it. So first of all, he uh, gave us some background knowledge about IBC, which is super important. So what basically happens when you bridge your assets via IBC, you lock your assets on one source chain and then you get a recipe, a receipt for that. And this receipt um, get picked up by a relayer and the relayer basically gives um, this receipt to a destination chain. The destination chain verifies the receipt and uh, then the destination chain remints um, your assets, uh, so to say. So there is no smart contract uh, involved. There is no centralized company that um, that does anything. So this is very important to know. So the attack surface for IBC is a little bit smaller. And then he mentioned something that many, many people um, do not know is that the address holding the assets on the source chain is called the escrow wallet. And um, he also wrote a thread about it. So the important aspect about this scroll wallet is that it basically holds the assets on um, the source chain. So now the question is, hmm, what happens if I would, you know, take advantage or if, if I would um, compromise this scroll address? What would happen then? Is this a problem? Tybox says, ah, not really, because escrow addresses are controlled by the IBC Go module, and uh, the IBC Go module um, has been has been audited by informal systems uh, multiple, multiple, multiple times, and um, this also got implemented by forty nine Cosmos chains. So um, IBC is generally much, much safer compared to the common bridging technology because there is no smart contract involved and um, you cannot just compromise an escrow address because this is controlled by the IBC Go module. So there are, um, it, it's for, for a hacker, it would be like much, 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 much more complex to attack IBC uh, in some sense. Of course, never say never. Um, but yeah, also one thing that Hybok mentioned, and I think this is a very big key takeaway here. While a software bug is always possible, the fact that 50 sovereign chains are already using the Cosmos stack means that hundreds of devs should have their eyes on the SDK changes. So he, the key takeaway is also the more this Cosmos narrative, the more the IBC and the Cosmos SDK gets adopted in the crypto industry, the safer also IBC and uh, the Cosmos SDK becomes because if something changes, if if someone spots an attack on this um, bridge or this bridging technology, um, better said, then um, this um, will be recognized in no time. So because more eyes are on that. So this is um, a pretty interesting takeaway because as of now, IBC has been battle proven. IBC has proven that it is, as of now, the safest bridging technology. And the more IBC gets expanded and adopted, the safer it will become. So I'm not worried about IBC. On the contrary, I'm even more bullish on the Cosmos IBC. To wrap things up, guys, I assume that there is never a boring day in crypto, right? Also, I lost some money uh, with this bridging hack. I woke up in the morning and then I realized, what? Well, some money is uh, gone or it's not that um, that much worth anymore. So yeah, this was not a very nice uh, not a very nice experience. But this is crypto, I guess. We are still in an experimental phase, and yeah, we have to break things to get to the mass adoption part. But yes, of course, for FMOS, this isn't great news at all. I believe many users will leave the FMOS ecosystem just because they do not want to have to do anything anymore with things like this. Um, I mean, now again, we saw a drama where people lost vast amounts of money. And uh, then we also have uh, the other aspect that many projects will struggle to survive now because they had 
lots of stable coins on FMOS, I assume. So this could also be um, a short term impact that could harm the FMOS ecosystem in a very, very short period of time. But all in all, there are multiple bridging technologies for FMOS to take advantage of. And besides, I mentioned that the blockchain is still up and running at FMOS. FMOS is safe, so I'm not worried about FMOS. It's just, yeah, not very, not a very pleasant situation right now. And um, I think the next couple of weeks and months won't be uh, the nicest ones in the very young history of FMOS. On the other hand, we saw once again, how safe and good IBC is. Um, we also saw some comparisons uh, whether this would be possible with IBC as well. And yes, in a nutshell, no, it would be much, 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 much more difficult. IBC is way more advanced than most of these bridging technologies. So in fact, here is another reason to be bullish on IBC. But of course, no financial advice. But now, guys, let me know what you think of the hack. Were you affected? Comment in the comment section below. And also stay tuned for Thursday, where I will host a live stream with Skip Protocol. We will once again talk about IBC. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on Thursday.